Hey everybody, welcome back to the world of RPGs. Today we're going to be taking a look at The Legend of Grimrock 2. It's an old school dungeon crawler made by a team called Almost Human. They're a pretty small indie developer and they've been pretty quiet since they made Legend of Grimrock 2. So I'm not sure if they're working on anything else. If anybody does know if they are working on something else, let me know down in the comments. At the time of making this vid, The Legend of Grimrock 1 and 2 is on sale as a bundle on Steam for $9 New Zealand, which is probably going to be like five bucks in the US. And I'll leave a link down below for that if you guys want to check it out. I am actually playing through this on my stream right now uh, i'll leave a link below for that too if you want to come through and check that out live i'm playing through on the hardest difficulty man and let me tell you it is really difficult the enemies are jacked up so high that my entire party will die in a second if i make a bad play all right we're gonna jump into this i'm gonna play for about 20 30 minutes give you guys a good taste of the game let's jump into it all right let's take a quick look at the options we've got uh, everything cranked up to the absolute maximum music and ambient everything's good Let's go ahead and jump into a new game, though. Well, look, you know what? I'm definitely creating my characters. Wait, does that mean yes or no? An X for yes? I'm guessing that means yes. Uh, I'm going to put the difficulty on easy. Just because I'm currently playing through the game on hard and it is extremely difficult. Just a, just a quick note um, for anybody who's willing to try out the game. I am playing through. I'm about 70% through the game on hard mode, and it is ridiculous. You will suffer at the hands of the enemies on this island, let me tell you. So we're just going to... I'm going to put it on easy so I can see the difference. And uh, let's create some characters. This is actually a really cool UI. I, I, I really like this UI. Um, all right. So first of all, we've got five races. Human, Insectoid, Lizard Man, Minotaur, Rattling. Each one has you know, little buffs and debuffs and things like that. So I've got humans, they gain 10% EXP. Uh, sorry, EXP 10% faster. Insectoids gain a little bit of strength boost. They are, they have a dexterity, um, minus two dexterity, minus one vitality, but plus two willpower. Your chance of getting body parts injured is reduced by 50%, which is pretty good actually for like maybe a front row, a tank, something like that. Lizard Man has a boost to dexterity, but a, uh, a loss to willpower. And uh, But the good thing about Lizard Man is they're resistant, 25% resistant to all elements, which is pretty cool too. A Minotaur plus five strength, but minus four to dex. Uh, vitality plus four, willpower minus three. Food consumption rate is 25% higher than normal. Those Minotaur boys eat a lot. Rattlings. Uh, minus four strength, but plus two to dexterity and plus two to evasion. And they have plus 15 kg to maximum uh, carry weight, maximum load, I guess. And they are completely immune to diseases. Uh, all right, so my front row guy, obviously I build a party of four right here. So my front row guy is going to be a minotaur. I'm actually going to go for a barbarian. The classes in this game, alchemist, barbarian, battle mage, farmer, this seems like a troll class to me. Fighter, Knight, Rogue, and Wizard. They're all pretty self-explanatory, except Alchemist. There are a whole bunch of reagents in the game. Kind of, you, you can find them randomly just on the ground. Some of them are quite difficult to find. You can track them down, but um, you can com basically combine those ingredients into potions. Energy potions, health potions, anti-venom potions, rage potions, shield potions, just all kinds of potions. Um... But I don't know if you need to be an alchemist in order to do... I don't think you do. Um, huh. How, wait a minute. Herbs in your inventory. Oh, so if you're an alchemist, herbs in your inventory multiply. The growth rate is determined by the number of steps taken. So if you're an alchemist, you need... You will be constantly growing the stuff that you pick up. That's pretty useful, actually. Firearms have a 50% less chance to malfunction. A barbarian, massive amounts of health, energy, plus one strength per level. Oh, I can't wait for that. Um, a battle mage, the weight of the equipped armor is reduced by 50%. You can cast spells with bare hands. You gain protection plus 10 and resist all plus 10 when equipped with a magical staff or an orb. That's actually pretty cool. What is this farmer class? 
you receive no skill points. Instead of slaying monsters, you gain experience by eating food. 100% troll class. I'm not sure. Maybe there's some secret to that class we, that we just don't know about. Fighters, special attacks with melee weapons take half of the time to build up and cost 25% less energy. Pretty cool, actually. Uh, a knight, protection plus one per level. Weight of equipped armor is reduced by 50%. Evasion bonus of equipped shields is increased by 50%. That's pretty damn cool. I think I'm going to create a knight. Uh, a rogue, when dual wielding, you suffer only 25% penalty to weapon damage, which is normally 40%. And a plus one chance per level to score a critical hit with a missile or throwing weapon. And of course, wizards. Uh, you can cast spells with bare hands, willpower plus two. So my front rower, let's call this guy Kaz. Let's choose this portrait. Let's go with this gigantic lion looking mofo right here. Um, let's stack his strength to absolute maximum. Let's give his let's give him a, a dex buff and one point in vitality. He's not he doesn't have much willpower though. Um, and now we choose the traits. There's this massive list of traits here. Aggressive gives a little damage boost. Aura gives a little energy buff. Uh, 20 plus 20 to energy. Cold blooded plus 25 to resist cold endurance maximum carry capacity is increased by 25 kilos and food consumption rate is decreased by 25 that, that kind of gets rid of his uh, natural thing to eat 25 percent more which is pretty cool actually evasive a uh, little evasive buff um little vitality buff muscular strength buff natural armor protection we're gonna go like full power for this guy i think rage your strength is temporarily increased by 10 when you have less than 20 percent health remaining uh that could be a contender strong mind is a willpower buff agile dexterity buff uh demon ancestor is resist fire headhunter strength plus one for each skull carried i'm actually gonna take this um and the only reason why i'm taking that is because in my game that i'm currently playing through the hard playthrough i've collected about eight or nine skulls so a strength boost of eight or nine so far in the game seems pretty significant so i'm definitely going to take that um and what else can i take what else is going to give me damage maybe i should take aggressive i'm just going full full 100 percent attack power with this guy um so i think those are pretty cool damage 8 to 15 already with his bare fists nice um let's go over here let's give him one point in heavy weapons and then let's give him one point in armor. Just like that. This is the skill list. You get two to start off with. Alchemy, athletics, concentration for mages. Light weapons, heavy weapons, missile weapons. Uh, bows and the like, throwing weapons. Firearms, accuracy. Critical armor. Dodge. And then a bunch of uh, elements. Fire, magic, air, earth, water. But for our Barbarian, we want heavy weapons and armor. All right, we've got our first guy done. A second character. I actually want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go for an Insectoid. Look at this guy right here. Let's choose this, this Hornady, Waspy looking dude. Yeah, I like it. Let's call him... Let's call him Clicky. Uh, his class... I think I want to create a Knight. So this guy for me is going to be the Ultra Tank... I'm going to get his strength to 15. I want to make sure he's got no negatives. Um, yeah, let's boost his... Let's boost his vitality. His strength and vitality... Okay. 16 strength, 12 vitality, 10 dexterity. For this guy, I want to do light weapons. And armor. So we're going to have a light weapon specialist in the front row. We're going to have a heavy weapon specialist in the front row. But our light weapon guy is going to be a tank. Um, I think that's pretty cool for a front row. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, for our third character, um, are we good with this guy? Yeah, yeah, we're good. No, we didn't select our traits. Our traits for our insectoids. So I want to go for cooldown period for all actions you perform is decreased by 10%. That is pretty awesome, actually. Um... Your body is covered by a thick chitin shell. You gain protection plus 10. I'm I'm going for that. I'm definitely going for that. 
Um, what else have we got here? Natural armor. Your skin is very thick and armor like protection plus five. I could take that, you know. Or cooldown period for all actions you perform is decreased by 10%. That seems pretty significant to me. I think I'm going to take that. So we, we got chitin armor and quick. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay, so we got our third guy in the back row. I'm actually going to create a rattling. A rattling... What portrait do we have here? Oh, let's select... Let's select this guy right here. He He's kind of got that look on his face where... You're not actually sure. This is like... He could be psychotic. You don't know what's going on behind those eyes, you know? Um, let's max his strength out. I mean, sorry. Let's get his strength back to zero. Right, so he's got... Uh, let's max out his dexterity and let's give him some give him a little bit of vitality or actually a little bit of willpower um his traits uh mutation one of your abilities attribute scores chosen randomly increases by one when you gain a level i kind of like that i'm gonna do that and then agile dexterity plus two um muscular healthy evasive I think I'm gonna take I think I'm gonna take this martial training for him to give me an accuracy boost. I wanna make sure that this guy never never misses. He just never misses from the back row. And the reason why is because I'm gonna choose light weapons for him, but I'm also gonna choose accuracy. So there's a skill here at the second level you can perform melee attacks from the back row. So he's not going to be able to do that to start off with, but one more point, and he's going to be able to attack from the back row with daggers and swords and things like that. So I'm going to take that for sure. And maybe at some point I'll give him some like points and missile weapons or something. I'm not sure yet. Uh, what should we call this guy? Let's call this guy McCheese Face. There we go beautiful look at that mccheese face he's got traits sorted attributes sorted skills sorted all right and for the last slot let's create a let's create a wizard there we go let's create a human wizard called what should we call her fizzle okay it's it, that's to incite you know confidence in the rest of the team that she knows what she's doing when she's casting. It's fine. Let's max out her willpower. Um, let's give her some dexterity. I don't think she really needs vitality. Um, let's make her a battle mage. Uh, or a wizard. 35 willpower. So willpower plus 2. Health 50, energy 50 per level. Health 35, energy 50. But willpower plus 2 can cast spells with bare hands. You know what? We're going to go for a human wizard. Let's lock it in. Um, with that experience points boost, we're also going to go for... Um, what is the human? Fast learner. An additional 10% EXP. I like that, actually. And then Aura with the plus 20 energy. Hell yeah. And I think for the skills, we're going to go... Increases your energy by 20 for each skill point. At the third level, your energy regen rate is increased by 25%. I think I'm going to go for Fire Magic. And I think I'm going to go for Concentration. That seems good to me. So we got Fizzle, McCheese Face, Clicky, and Haz. We've got some absolute monsters here. Are we good? Skills. Everything's done. Everybody's got their attributes and traits selected. We've got our skills done. Let's start the game. Cue epic music.
Bermuda Triangle, I knew we shouldn't have sailed through here, man. Who is driving this boat? On the only piece of surviving wreckage was large enough to survive, large enough to, to hold us and our party within our iron cage and float that to shore. Chance of that happening? An easy 90%. Oh man, so cool, dude. I love it. I didn't actually know that this game was... this. Obviously, this game's a sequel, but it actually started off uh, in development as a DLC for the first game. I did not know that at all. Uh, here we are. Inside of our cage. Let's grab that stick. What is that? A branch. Let's smash, smash a door open. Uh, this is a pretty cool UI, man. We've got our inventory here for our guys. Clearly, you've got like uh, weapon slots, armor slots, things like that. Trinkets. We've got a stats window so you can look at all of your stats. All of your resistances, the, your weapons damage uh, for your left and right hand. Your skills, of course, which we picked up before. Your traits, uh, which is pretty cool as well. Oh, there's a crab. Can we eat that crab? Kill the crab! We can actually hold down the right, uh, the right mouse button and kind of look around as well. You're not 100% you're not, uh, fixed to this grid, this grid movement, which is pretty cool. We can attack the reeds. Already explored. We've got a rock. We'll give that to McCheese face. You can throw those from the back row. Uh, something I wanted to point out real quick is that this beautiful auto mapping... It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. And this is the this is the key part that needs to be added to every single RPG. And I will rave about this forever. If you ever come across a square or tile with some weird stuff, and you don't really know what it is, and you maybe you need to come back to it, you can drop this right here and say, "Come back to this later." And it will stay there. Like, you can write tons and tons and tons of stuff. You can leave as many notes as you want all over the place. And it will just stay there. And, you know, so you don't have to remember something that you saw. Um, if there's, like, some special note on the ground or anything like that. You don't have to do anything particular. We've got a spiky fruit, which is actually a native... Um, a native piece of food to give to your insects for a little buff after they eat three spiky fruits so something to keep in mind uh, if you do create an insectoid um feed the spiky fruits to your insectoid that looks kind of suspicious this little alcove right here nice place for a little picnic right what's that some pants oh that's right we're all actually walking around pantsless completely nude what a party, an insectoid, a minotaur, a rattling, and a human in the buff. We can't pick up these, can we not pick up these crabs? Okay, we can't pick up the crabs. That's okay, we'll smash some reeds down in frustration. We got a bone club. We got a bone club for head. Oh, that's a heavy weapon actually. Okay, he's doing 9 to 20 with the bone club. And our insectoid knight is doing 4 to 10. Pretty good. Nice. Okay, here's our first, our first encounter. Oh, I didn't even learn any, I didn't even try to learn any magical spells. Look at that. 
60 ESP. We got ourselves a, a, a turtle steak. We need food, actually. I could do with a few more steaks, but let's let's have let's get Haz eating that steak. Let's come down here, search this thing. We've got a little plant here, an ether weed. We'll give that to our wizard. What is that? Oh, that's a that's an alchemy reagent. Okay, what have we got over here? We've got a little button over here. Open that door up. Definitely getting those Eye of the Beholder vibes with this movement and everything, but it's just like a much, much nicer Eye of the Beholder version. Updated graphics. Oh. I only knew that because I've been playing the game and I just remembered that we made a Fire Mage. Let's eat these turtle steaks. Delicious. So... I have a little fire burst spell now, which I'm going to use for her. Which is pretty cool. Oh, there's some... Oh, there's a couple darts. Nice. Oh, there's another dart. Okay, so we got some... We've actually got some throwing weapons for this lad already. There we go. So he's in the back row tossing some darts at people. Nice. We got ourselves an iron key. What is that? A turtle egg. Okay. Oh, it's food. Okay. Well, we'll we'll let we'll let um yeah we'll let McCheeseface carry our food. Although, not sure if he can be trusted to carry it. But you know we'll we'll oh look at that. We found ourselves a nice little chest. We got some shoes. Kaz can wield the shoes. We got a torch, and we've got a smoked sea bass. How nice. How nice of, of someone to to smoke a fish and then place it into that treasure chest for us. Let's hack these reeds down in frustration. There's another turtle right here. Look at that. Look at that power we have. We've got a couple rocks now. It's pretty good. Oh, that's the key. Iron key. First door completed. Okay, so we got our map. Here we go. Let's have a look around. This is also one of those games where you really need to pay attention to your surroundings because there could be a little hidden button just in an out-of-the-way place. It doesn't seem like it's going to be anything and then when you interact with it, boom, it opens up a secret, enables a little teleportation gate or something like that. So it does pay to keep your eyes peeled for anything that looks out of place. Has just got himself a tattered shirt. Amazing. Oh, is that our boat? That's not our boat. Um. Okay, so if we use a stone. Look at that. I will say something about the puzzles in this game. And that is that that, that little mechanical puzzle right there this game is just full of those kinds of mechanical puzzles and it's just it's just amazing really really cool makes you think a lot zaffy robe protection plus two we got ourselves a robe now we start the hand me down the hand me down procedure right i'm pretty sure all you guys do that you start giving all of your good stuff to your main character and then when you find something that's better, you, you slowly filter that stuff down to the other characters. Oh, what are those? Can I pick those out of there? Yes. Wait, how much damage? 4 to 13 with the knives. Okay. Let's start. Start throwing. 35 damage. From hairs. Huge damage. What's down here? Nothing? Okay. Oh, there's another spiky fruit. For my insect lad. I'll hold on to that. Save it when he gets hungry. Crystal of life. Touch to heal wounds and restore dead champions back to life. Beware its power needs time to recharge. So yeah, this is one of those uh, crystals. This is where you save your game. It's a full heal for your characters. Just one thing to note. It doesn't fill up your food bar. But it will fill up all of your health and energy. 
um, and it, it creates an auto save for you as well. Oh, what do we got here? Scroll of Fibers. That is literally this. I just, I, 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 I just learned that, only because, and I just cast it right on myself, and we burned. Listen, it was just a misfire, a simple misclick. That's all it was. Sorry, guys. This is a perfect example. See, I have a random statue right here. So let's go open up the map. Let's grab this. Um, let's use the question mark. Whoops. Let's put this here and say... Weird... Statue. Right? We don't know what the hell that is. But it was in a kind of like hidey hole place. So let's just make a note of it and move on. What do we got? X marks the spot? Well. I bet we make an X here and we're good, right? Let's get to the middle. Let's put that down. I hope I can pick all my stuff back up again. Door open. Yes, I can pick up my stuff. I'm glad because those knives are legendary so let's let him carry those um okay it's an old scary looking tree <gasps> oh okay okay i see you slippery fish man look at us we got this no fish man is gonna take us down don't make me jump into that square. One thing um, that that might be a little bit tricky for people, um, just like just new to this game, Legend of Grimrock, is is that the mages you actually always have to manually uh, to cast spells. You have to draw the runes in. It's not. It's not. Uh, you know, just just simply click on a. Um, oh, she's out of energy. It's not, you know, just a simple click on this spell to cast it kind of thing. Oh, there's another one of those weird statues. Legend of Kilhagen, the second most precious thing in life for a seafaring captain is his sword, because without it he cannot command his crew. Thus, upon losing his weapon somewhere on Shipwreck Beach, he lost what is most important to him, the respect of his crew. Okay, so we need to find his sword. Let's just make a quick note here. Weird statue again. It's holding out his hand, so we've got to place something on there. Just chop... Oh, there was something in here. A peasant's cap. Look at that. Minotaur... Has the barbarian is actually now wearing a tiny little peasant's cap, which is just phenomenal. Let's grab those falcon sky. So these are all, these are all little reagents for creating potions. If we were an alchemist, is another one. So far, nothing suspicious here. What is that button? Windgate Terminus East. Okay, well, there's a... Okay, we don't have a key for this door yet. We do have a button here. Let's... Windgate Terminus West. Oh, okay, that teleported us across the map. Oh, we're fine. These turtle boys. We can take them. Look at us. Putting in the... Actually, he's putting in the work too, this turtle. You know, one thing that I can say so far is... is Oh, there's a bag here. Is that the difficulty is definitely... Definitely different on easy... Compared to hard. Huge, huge difference. I wonder if our boy will do more damage with the sling. Our... Our roguey lad... So he's doing 4 to 13 right now. Let's give him this. 
6 to 17 with the sling. Oh, okay. Okay. What do we got here? We got a locked door. How, how on earth do we get in there? Uh, well, let's, we can take a... We can take one of these darts. And we can place it through the door like that. And we can open this up. We got ourselves a healing potion. Oh, we got a dagger. Now that... We're going to leave that for that guy right there. And an ornate key. Our rogue can carry the key. We've got a dagger for McCheese face, finally. But we need our first level in order for him to be able to attack it from the back row. Oh, and that key is for this door right here. So we'll we'll use that. We'll get in here. Wow, how did he miss the stone literally bounced off his cranium. Literally bounced off his cranium. We are absolutely destroying this this guy. Look at our power and capability. We're going to grab that. Nothing in here except this box. What's in the box? We've got a shovel. A smoked sea bass. A note. At the lone oak in the shadow of the blue light, I buried it. Ooh, a buried treasure. Okay. And a scroll of poison cloud, which needs earth magic. Let's give that to our wizard. A rapier, a light weapon. Requires light weapons one. Oh, there we go. Look at that. We can finally get rid of our branch. He's doing 8 to 21 now. Oh my god, almost more than our barbarian. What the heck? Let's have him eat that thing. Let's toss this on the ground because we don't need that anymore. They run around with branches in our pockets. Anybody would think we were hard up for weapons. We're not. We're professionals now. Okay. Uh, oh. And there we go. That was the sword required. So we place, so we place the sword on there. And that's it. It unlocked that door. So now... Um, we can go back to the other statue, place the sword, see what happens there. Oh, there's a... Where did this guy come from? Okay, we're, we're in no threat. This is... We are pretty much safe, I think, in terms of damage on easy. I could, I've determined that right now. Ooh, secret door. We got a gold key. Nice. Um, in the shadow of the blue light. I don't know if... What did the note say? What did that note say again? Where are we? Here we go. At the lone oak in the shadow of the blue light, I buried it. At the... The shadow of the blue light. Okay, so that means it's on this side of the low. Okay, so it's right here. Let's dig. Look at us. And Fizzle gained a level. Oh, man. We got a potion. We got an embalmer's robe. Protection plus two, vitality plus one. Boom. Hand me downs. The hand me down system is working. Got a tattered thing right there. Okay, we'll put that down there. We've got an empty sack that we don't need, so I'm just going to toss that. There's nothing in there. Okay, good. Also, we just leveled up. Legendary. Let's have a look in here. Um, go to our skills. One unused skill point. So, we have concentration. Increased damage of fire spells by 20% for each skill point. At the 5th level, you gain fire resist 50. Um, let's go... Yeah, let's let's add another point of fire magic. For her. Let's make that little fire burst spell a lot more powerful. Um, so where are we going now? So we open up this door right here. So let's see what's in there. 
Oh yeah, that's a really good that's a really good uh, hint right there. If you do start losing a lot of uh, a lot of health, or you want to you know run away and heal up, you can just press R to rest, and while you're resting, time will pass. Um, there is a full day night cycle outside. Time will pass by, and you will gain health and energy back uh, at the cost of like your your food bar, basically. Here we go into our first dungeon. Halls of the dead. Well, that's nice. We can... We can grab a torch and we can walk around with it. Very nice. And now the... Now the hunting the walls for... Secret doors and switches begins. What do we got here? Another health potion. And a scroll of shock. Give that to her. Poison Cloud, Earth Magic 1, and Air Magic 1. So these are just some basic level spells, which we can't learn right now because we don't have Earth Magic or Air Magic, but I probably should get those. Uh, and we have Lockpicks. Nice. Halls of the Dead. That sounds welcoming, I think. It's a mummy. Let's go this way. Did he just walk on the pressure plate? Okay, this the sling doesn't do too much damage to the mummy. The fire does a lot of damage to the mummy. Look at look at our We're totally fine. We got this, man. Look at our power. The mage is absolutely destroying the neighborhood. So we all just leveled up. Just a little bit of map uncovering right there. Another box over here. What's in the box? A flintlock pistol and 20 bullets. You know what? I'm going to take this flintlock pistol. I'm going to put that right back on the shelf. You know why? Because guns have no play. You know what? I'm going to take them out put them on full display right here. Why? Because I'm going to take the box and I'm going to leave it. Putting guns in our sword and sorcery game. How dare you. How dare you, sir. Okay, what else have we got in this dungeon? Anything fancy? Look at that button right there. Let's push it. We probably shouldn't have touched the button, but you know what? We're going to do it anyway. Leather boots. Uh, plus four protection. And the hand-me-down system again. So we got, we leveled up. Okay, so for hairs, I'm going to put another point in armor. Boom. Just like that. So he's learned the light armor trait for the insectoid knight. For clicky, I'm going to add, I'm going to go for the armor as well. So we're both proficient in light armor. Down here for McCheese Face, I'm going to grab that accuracy. We can go accept. And now, now 7 to 18. Now I can give him his dagger. 8 to 20 from the back row. From the back row. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now he can attack from the back row. Perfection. Okay, now what have we got? What have we got over here? Why does that seem... Oh, well, we can't go that way, can we? That's not... That wasn't very good. Oh, I see. Well, that solved the puzzle then, didn't it? So, essentially, if you press this button to open this thing up, stood on the puzzle, it would have closed the door. So you need to put the rock on the on the plate, open the door up, and then that stays down. Beautiful. Oh, that's 17 from the back row. Listen, we, this team is going to be absolutely amazing. 
We've got a locked door down here. Okay, we need a key for that door. Let's go back through here. Let's head down through here. This was a secret door and a... And oh. It's led us to another secret. We didn't get any turtle steaks from that guy. Full day-night cycle. It's dark outside now. Seems mean to be chopping away at these poor turtles. I mean, they didn't do anything wrong, did they? They are delicious, though. We are eating their steaks. Ooh, here we go. It's locked, but we have some lockpicks. And we find a Thralm Tribal Mask and another healing potion. What is this? Protection plus three. Energy plus five. Okay, well, you know what? We need that protection in the front row, so we're, we're, this is what we're doing. That's what we're doing right there. Uh, let's take that torch away. So we don't burn it burn it out. Uh, actually, you know what? No, let's just let's just wield it. We're fine. Okay, so that was a nice little secret right there. Guys, that's gonna do it for this first look. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, I can say without a doubt that this game is so immersive once you really get into it. Once you get way deep down in the dungeons, finding a bunch of really, really cool treasure, getting into the really, really complex puzzles that this game has to offer, and there are some absolute brain busters, let me tell you. Once again, I'll put the Steam link to this game down below, so you can just click that if you're interested. And if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe, and turn on that notification bell, and uh, there's a bunch of other links down below to all my social media, Patreon, Discord, and all the other ways that you can support me if you find my content useful. Catch you guys in the next one.